I, seriously, I love these things. Yeah, they're like, really, they're so good. They're really cool. I mean, like, nothing drives like them. You could say yeah. they're in a class of their own. You, no, don't. Don't. The G class. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And today is the latest in our new versus old series. We're comparing an old G-Class AMG to a new G-Class AMG. And we're going to see what makes them different and what makes them not so different. And we're happy to announce that we've partnered with Omaze to give away a brand new 2020 G63 and $20,000. We'll share more about it at the end of the video, but in order to enter and contribute to a good cause, go to omaze.com slash Benz for your chance to win. Now, the G-Class. Probably the coolest off-road truck ever, and an undisputed icon of the Mercedes lineup. And the cool part is that this G55 AMG you're looking at is, as far as we could find, the cheapest AMG G-Class in North America. Adjusted for inflation, it would have run you just under $200,000 Canadian new in 2005. This one today is being featured thanks to CB&C car sales and leasing located in Oakville, Ontario. And it's going for less than $40,000. Americans, that's about 30 grand US for an AMG G-Class. Yeah, or you can spend almost seven times the amount, unless you win the one through Omaze, and get a brand new, updated and upgraded in almost every single way, G63. And this one doesn't have 180,000 kilometers on it. What it does have is the interior of a modern day S-Class and the exterior of a militia leader's dream. It's now more livable thanks to things like independent front suspension. It's more powerful and looks completely different. Okay, maybe not that. This one has been kindly provided by Tida Auto and sits amongst some other monsters in their garage based here in Toronto. All right, let's see what a price gap of $220,000 does to the G Class. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Ow. Oh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, you could never get in trouble for slamming a door. That's so satisfying. You know? What's more satisfying, that or a Lamborghini like spider gullwing? With, door? A, with a Lambo, it's made of carbon fiber and I'm careful with it. This, you just go, <laughs> it's, it. it's like slamming your bedroom door. It is, yeah. yeah, it's so satisfying. All right, let's talk about how they look. They look like G-Wagons. They look, they look very similar. Many years apart, they look very similar. There they, are details. They're, they're different though. They are made of all different stuff now. Yes, It's all yes. different parts, apart from I think the door handles and a few other little things. Yeah, maybe like the sun visors or something like that. Yeah. Like, there's very few parts that have carried over the generations, but they don't look it because... No. And that's, well, that's got a splash of color, right? Oh yeah, this, see, this is my, my Made in Graz Austria badge. And what, is it, what does it say? That's Ein Fahrzeug macht seinen Weg. <laughs> What do they mean? I listen, a lot of people probably appreciate that you try every language every time, apart from the actual native speakers that are sitting there. I'm a man of, uh, man of languages. Okay, didn't yeah. you drop out of French at grade nine? Yeah, no, I did. Yeah. Um, right. It actually has an English meaning and it says, a vehicle makes its way. Nice. Oh, cool, I thought, it, it would be nicer if it didn't look like it was about to crash into a very nice monument. Yeah, this is a little German castle there, um, or an Austrian castle, I suppose. These wheels aren't the, the old ones, No, right? no, these are like a newer AMG wheel. This is the one change. They really do suit the, they, they suit the truck very well. Yeah. Be because... Because it hasn't changed. <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> Obviously, we still got, we got these like mesh things that cover the lights that we don't have in the new one. Also, the lights are different. There's little screws on top of these and there aren't screws on top of these. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the reflectors are different. Yeah, well, they're, they're not integrated here into the... Uh the side oh that's right okay thing. Cool. so obviously this one has some stuff going on in the front there's there's a million different accessories people add to these trucks obviously this person um originally had added some auxiliary driving lights i love auxiliary Questionably. driving lights no i, I like no them. no watch this i like them until they're like they tangerine orange yeah that's what i mean they, sh <laughs> they should be white no they shouldn't that is amazing i love this that's, I would do that if I had one. Yeah. Also, and the grills are very different, obviously. This is the, the new Sorry, AMG. I don't trust the battery. I'm just going to, yeah. Well, I guess it's 2005. Yeah. yeah it's it, awesome. it was a hard time. This has the Panamericana grill. Yep. Of the new AMGs. I think, I think it really modernizes them really well. 
This is a nice looking truck, you know? It's beautiful, and we've got these circular LEDs now, which makes it look happy. It looks like Wally. Like, oh, like Wally. Wally, yeah, Eva. Eva. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But as we go around the side. Oh, yes. Side we've, pipes. We've got all these side pipes, yeah. AMG signature. And this has the big fixed brakes, unlike your old one. Oh, yeah, I've just got a regular floating caliper. Yeah. All right, slightly different on the back. These chrome things in front of the lights, is, it's, it's a real mad thing. It's amazing. You don't see that anymore. I think it's cool. It, I it's, think it dates it. It protects it. them for off-roading. It dates it a lot now. I'm sure this person did a lot of off-roading. This is clean. Yeah, no one does off-roading. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool, like with the black and the white and just the way that it, it's like, I feel like Emperor Palpatine would roll up in one of these were it not in a galaxy far, far away. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's a really nice look. And then these are these giant, oh. Oh, you missed it. Yeah. So yeah, this feels so assisted. Heavy. This feels heavy still. This oh. still feels heavy. Oh. See how much weaker he is than me? Oh, he's, just, he's newer and lighter and made of aluminum. See it? I'm newer, I'm lighter, and I'm... Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> yeah. I just does a little thing. No, no, it's okay, you know, it's fine. All right, but obviously, you know, these share a lot of exterior things. The interiors, though, have changed massively. Massively. Let's have a look at the new one. Okay. Oh, mine's got a thing as well. Oh yeah? It's black and white, and it's not destroying a monument, and it says Schockelproofed. I think that's the, the name of the mountain where they test these cars. Oh. So they've proved, it's proved. It's proved? They proved, what have it's, they proved? I think Nothing! Oh, that doesn't get old. That doesn't get old. All right, inside the new G-Wagon. It's very nice. It's very nice, it's yeah. Very One nice. of the standout things for us is that the red leather. Yeah, well, also not just the red leather, the fact that every single thing is trimmed in leather. Like this handle is, the door, like the magazine holder. And it's, and it's all plush. The way down. It's, it's soft. It's not just like a phony leather. We have the Alcantara as yep. well, but yeah, this leather I'm seeing on these seats are incredible. No, they really, really are, aren't they? Like they're so comfortable. Also, does this have that active bolstering? Thing? It has the active bolstering, it has massaging seats. This is a G-Class, sorry, G-Wagon upsets people. No, G I'd like to say G-Wagon. Glendewagen? Glendewagen. It's actually W-A-G-E-N, by the way, for people that are confused. It is Wagen, it's German. I've got no dog in this fight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But as a G-Class, it looks after you. It's not the hard, rough, old thing that it used no, to be. It's not. I'm curious it's... to see what that's like in a minute. Yeah, you'll see. But inside here, it feels very S-Classy. It, it, has, it has the two dual screens, yep. it has the AMG steering wheel. This has the command system, so it's not the new M box that we found in the A class. Okay. But it's still got. You can still navigate through the little thumb things, though. Which is the right? most important thing. That is so good. Yeah. I love these. And you can put brilliant songs on through the Burmester sound system. Oh, that's so good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a luxury car inside. Yeah. But, but to be fair, the G class always was that, or at least it was when it hit America in the 2000s. It's true. It was always kind of like leaning towards luxury, but it still has, obviously, the fundamentals here, right? We've got three locking diffs. Yeah. And, and the three buttons are in the same spot. If I'm not mistaken, and 20 lashes if I'm wrong. Okay. You still have to turn them on in sequence for them to work. Oh, for them to engage properly. Yeah, even oh. though they're electronic and not pneumatic the way they used to be. Oh, interesting. Oh, oh there's an IWC Schaffhausen. I knew you'd get excited about that. So yeah, good. IWC Schaffhausen. IWC Schaffhausen. Yeah, I know what you're getting for your birthday. Yeah. Casio. <laughs> you, you, you don't want to buy me those. Dressing. Unbelievable headroom, though. It's hilarious. If the glass ceiling is this high for, you know, everyone else, I yeah. get the struggle. It's a long way away. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a metaphor and a half. Um, oh, the back seats are still very uh, g vogony And they still, they still have the same leather and, and Yeah, look. but, the, but they lean towards jump seat. There. We have Apple nice. CarPlay, we've got Android Auto, we've got yeah. an incredible rear reverse ca uh, parking camera. Oh, yeah, the overhead one? In, right? which, in which the actual vehicle in the thing is the G-Class. That's cool. And it, with all the slats, it looks yeah. really awesome. It's very lovely. We've got this grab. Oh, that's solid. Wow. Yeah, the grab handles. Did they, did they weld that classic the G-Class. It's leather trimmed as well. It's luxury. It's really, really luxury. Yeah. It really Easy. is. I, the, the seats are the best part for me. The, the... That has some cool seat stuff too, though. It actually does have like, yeah. All right, let's go have a look. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, this feels older. Um, okay, immediately there's a problem. What's the problem? No matter what direction I push the powered seat button, it only puts the seat forward. I can't, <laughs> I can't put the seat, I can't put it backwards. It's an extreme weight loss tactic. Je now, now I'm worried. Well, you can't drive. Ah, it's way. only going forward, James. Panic. Ooh, there's a memory seat function, and it brings it back. Okay, we've been saved. We're safe. There's a lot of creaks and squeaks. It does. That's a. I, 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 I think that's a, quite forward thinking by Mercedes, because they knew that they were going to do that in 2020 as mm. well with all the new models. <laughs> <laughs> Although to be fair, that G-Class does not have that problem. No, it's solid. It's every, rock solid. Every other Mercedes that we've driven does. Does your G-Class have this though? 
Is, is that a fart button? Yeah. <laughs> just, just passes gas Silent for you. but deadly. No, it, it, it's like air inflatable things that give you lumbar support. No, no it doesn't have that. It has massaging seats. Yeah, I mean, so it has cool. the electric one. Yeah, but at least it puts the seat. Did yours put the seat back? Okay. No, so that's obviously a superior seat. Yo, check this out. This cup holder is trimmed in leather. Yeah, it's kind of gone gross though over time. Well, yeah, I mean, a little bit. All right, let's just back up for a second. There was a trend for some reason with brown, shiny wood. Was it shiny back then? I think so. It's polished. Yeah, it's definitely polished. Yeah. With the, and, and the black leather. The black, yeah, it's very, it's similar to the E38 we were in recently. Yes, yeah, that was the style of the, the German cars Although, this re era. Although, reviews of the time said that this had Rolls-Royce level leather inside. The leather is very soft. It's soft again. It's very yeah, nice. It's and soft. the seats are very comfortable. They really are. And the rear seats are actually just as comfortable. I would argue that the seats back here are more comfortable than the back seats in that one. They're really soft. They really are. Also, I have a bigger sunroof in this. Does it work? I don't, I don't want to try it. No, you don't want to try it. I don't want to try Too it. Too risky. Look, there's a lot of stuff, but to be fair, yeah. other than that seat, I've tested everything in here and everything works. Okay. I can't believe how modern the infotainment is. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a, a Game Boy Color. What's the name? What's the name? <laughs> what's the name of the color back in the day? Technicolor? Technicolor. <laughs> it looks like Technicolor. Yeah, but I have the three differential locking button. I have heated seats. Two stage. Wow, I got three stage in there and cooled Whatever. seats. Whatever. And yeah. massaging seats. Okay, fine. I have a gauge cluster that is, uh, it will always work because it's analog. I can't wait for that to not be true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's nice in here, but it feels so different. It's, it's a completely different experience. You're enamored. It's leather trimmed. How cool is that? Kind of, it looks like it should have some soup in it. <laughs> I'm not sure I drink out of that. Oh. What have we got here? Yeah, I do, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, wait, well, wait, stop dropping things. Is there a secret phone in here? Uh, I tried to find it, but I couldn't. There's a secret compartment. What does this do? Oh, info, connecting call. Who's it calling? Look, it, it feels dated, but as long as it works, I think it's, it's still pretty cool. It says G55 on the shifter. Right on the shifter, yeah. look at that. You've got a little Dreamweaver down here. Is this nice as well? Dreamweaver. <laughs> That's a dream catcher, James. A dream catcher. What's a dream weaver? A dream weaver's a song. It can't just be a song. It had to be based on something at some point. <laughs> That's a dream catcher. So, you know, actually, it's a cup holder. It's the one of two. Well, it depends. Here's the other one. If you one. really believe in what you're drinking, it's a dream. <laughs> a dream holder. Uh, can we drive these now? Yeah. Hey, more cup holders. I never... It still feels, compared to the E38, old 7 Series we drove, this still feels very put together. It does. It feels a little bit more... Is that, the phone is... Can I, hold on. I don't feel panicked. How do I... That's not a touch screen. Info call. It's, I'm just going to turn the car off. If this is I'm the last the time off. you're ever seeing us. James, there's a, there's a problem I'm because sorry I have for the that key. Thing. I have a key in the... How do I... Is it over? Yeah. Can we drive them now? Yep. Okay. All right, the new G63. Quarter of a million dollars. What does that do with your feet? A lot. Oh, yes. Ah, got a crick in my neck. And no, the 63 does not mean anything anymore. It's not a 6.3 litre, it's a 4 litre engine. But don't worry about that displacement deficit because this still has 577 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque, available down low. This has a 5.5 liter supercharged V8. So the number G55 actually meant something back then. If I'm honest, it's 469 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Feels like a little much for the frame of this truck. You put your foot down, <laughs> and it has side pipes, so it makes an amazing, thunderous AMG sound. When this came out, it was a big deal, because the previous G55 was naturally aspirated. This one had a different intercooler, a screw-type supercharger. It really took this vehicle to new AMG heights. 
Both of these are full-time four-wheel drive trucks and they both have V8s. This one is twin turbo as opposed to Thomas's supercharged one and they both have terrible fuel economy. In fact, when I put my foot down, I have a live consumption readout here. It goes up to 99.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometers, which is about zero miles per gallon. That was $5 of fuel right there. Hope it was worth it. This one does zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds. And that's not really slow, even by modern standards. And in a vehicle that is as aerodynamic as the broad side of an elephant, that's really impressive. Speaking of aerodynamics and big engines, <clears throat> fuel economy is, is really, 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 really not good. Yeah, see, I'm 25.8 liters per 100 kilometers. Since I filled up, like a couple kilometers ago, I've watched the needle go down. It was over a hundred bucks to fill it. And then there's the throttle, which is very non-linear. Nothing much happens. It kind of feels like there's a dead zone. And then all of a sudden you get a wump of AMG. So it's kind of hard to drive it smoothly. When you're on the highway though, other than the steering and the body motions and the wind noise and the fuel economy, it's really, really good on the highway. Comfortable, very comfortable. So as we said, even though the G-Classes look very similar, this was an all new car for 2019. And one of those massive changes is the independent front suspension that this has, which gives it the ability to handle better and ride better. Now I'm in an individual mode, so I've chosen what I think is the best way to enjoy this vehicle. And that's having the ride in comfort and the engine in dynamic mode, because there's a quite a lag in the throttle response in comfort mode that, you know, I want to put my foot down a lot and it's slow. But once I put my foot down and it gets to the power, it goes four and a half seconds north to 100 kilometers an hour. The thing weighs almost 6,000 pounds. It's a little bit heavier than the one Thomas is in, but the fact that both of these move the speed at which they do is, is nuts. It's also a nine speed transmission now instead of the seven speed and definitely not the five speed that Thomas is in. I can't wait for the 11 and the 13 speed. It's gonna be nuts. So the question that I'm sure you're wondering is how does the rest of the G-Wagon drive? This one, feels like a little bit more of a, an off-roady experience. It has a ton of character. This has a solid front axle, a live front axle, and it doesn't have the, the independent front suspension that the new G-Wagon does. So he's driving down a road like this. There's a lot of body motions, but that's what makes it fun for me. That's why I like this. It feels capable. It feels like I don't have to keep going straight on the road. I could just turn off into that field. It also has recirculating ball steering. And what that means is that it kind of just feels the same no matter where I put the wheel in a corner. I have noticed though that compared to new vehicles with electric power steering, it's actually not that bad. And then you come to a corner. So this is a very top heavy vehicle and the new G-Glass doesn't even handle that well. This one, it's a, uh, it's scary is the word I'm thinking for tight stuff. Kind of go, oh, uh, It's fun though, you have to pay attention driving it. it is, as I said, it's an experience to drive one of these. I love G-Wagons, I love them. We've recently had the pleasure of driving some seriously powerful muscle cars and they've impressed us like the Dodge Charger Hellcat, the GT500. And the way they turn is pure sports car at this point. And you, you know, you, it's easy to make fun of them and be like, well, they're only fine in a straight line. No, 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 this, this is only fine in a straight line. You take a corner in this fast, you put your life in your hands. It may be new, but it is still a very tall G-Class. And you gotta be careful around corners because it leans, oh, and it wants to go out of control. It says right here, high rollover risk. Don't want to roll over. But don't forget that boxy shape gives this massive advantages. Off-road, I have the locking differentials, all three of them, a low range gearbox, and lots of electronic controls and modes to, to handle the off-road stuff with. But also, this is the longest running Mercedes series after all, the G-Class. It has been bulletproofed and used for military exercises. With the looks and the history and the capabilities, this is it's one of the coolest vehicles we ever get to drive. And it's such a pleasure until you, so you take a corner, but then you do that. 
That said, I know for a fact that this truck is improved for the highway and I have no problem changing lanes on the highway in this. It's really comfortable. It's actually very quiet at highway speeds and even my friend told me at speeds above highway speeds. All right, let's go see how the old one feels. It's got the power, but my God, it does not want to turn. It wants to stay in a straight line. Some weird noises going on. But luckily you can shut it up with the sound of an AMG. There we go. Yeah, that's not slow, but it's not as quick as that G63. All right, James told me to do a full standing start. Oh. What? Oh my god. We might have popped a wheelie. <laughs> that is stupid. There's no need for this to be that fast. All right, see how it handles corners. Oh, yeah, it doesn't want to turn. The, the, the little confidence you have in a G-Class becomes zero in, when you go back to 2005, apparently. You need to invest in putting little like trolley wheels on the top left side of the car, so if it tips, you can kind of keep going and be like, yeah, I meant to do that. That's a bit scary, honestly. There's just so much up top mass. Any little bump in it, you could feel it just go like this. In that respect, these G-Wagons are very, very similar. They both have that top heavy feel. But the cool thing about this is that visibility and kind of the general vibe of the way that it drives is very, very similar, very similar. There's no getting away from the fact that this truck is two meters tall and you can feel every bit of it in the corners. And they really have improved on that in the new G-Class massively. In fact, you could say with confidence that they've improved on absolutely everything. I don't think there's one thing, you know, when we drove the E38 7 Series, it felt more sporty. And we, when we drove the old Miata, it felt a little bit more connected, a little bit rough around the edges in a fun way. I don't think there's anything that this beats the new one on in this comparison, apart from price. All right, conclusion on the new G63. Ridiculously fast, very, very nice. And uh, it, it has the G-Wagon charm. It really, really does. The old one has a, a much more kind of off-road, outback, rolling through the jungle feel to it. This, this doesn't have that as much. This feels more at home on the tarmac, I think. The price gap is massive between these two. And it's impossible for us to pick one of them because, well, you're saving $200,000 by going with the cheap one. You could buy the old one and a Lamborghini. No, no, that's, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Listen, we drive a lot of really cool cars. We're very fortunate in that way. But when you drive a G-Wagon, you're reminded that nothing drives like one of these. They're in a class of their own. The, the G-Class. So, if you want to win your own AMG G63 and $20,000 US, all the while helping a good cause, which in this case is Represent Justice, a charity that aims to reform the criminal justice system, then go to omaze.com slash bends and enter. Good luck and thanks for watching.